Isaac Malia Mungo's wife Cecilia Zaituni Amongi from elegance to struggle in Naguru slums, Cecilia Zaituni Amongi's life journey epitomizes a dramatic fall from grace. Once an esteemed air hostess, a VIP wife and a successful businesswoman, she now finds herself in the harsh realities of Naguru slums, caring for her grandchildren amidst dire circumstances. This narrative unfolds the complexities of her life in her glamorous past, her love story with Brigadier Isaac Luganzo, affectionately known as Melia Mangu, the aftermath of his death, her experiences in exile, and her current struggles. Life as an air hostess, in the 1970s, among his career as an air hostess with Uganda Airlines Corporation, what afforded her a life of luxury and adventure. She trained in Arusha, Tanzania and enjoyed globe-trotting experiences, staying in five-star hotels while serving affluent passengers. Among his role was not limited to smiling and serving meals, it involved meticulous training in customer service and safety protocols. During her time working in Uganda, she often resided in Lake Victoria Hotel or Apollo Hotel, a testament to her elevated social standing. It was on one of these journeys that fate introduced her to Corporal Isaac Luganzo who would later become her husband. Maliam Hungo was then a pay officer in the Air Force, stationed in Entebbe. Their romance blossomed as he swept her off her feet with charm and confidence. The couple married, and their lives intertwined with the political upheaval of the time, as Malia Mangu was related to Major General Idi Amin, the president of Uganda, a marriage amidst political turmoil. The relationship between Amongi and Malia Mangu thrived against the backdrop of Uganda's political upheaval. Malia Mungo played a pivotal role in the overthrow of Prime Minister Milton Obote in 1971, and his loyalty to Amin quickly elevated him to one of the president's most trusted aides. As a result, Amongi enjoyed a life filled with privilege, residing in Kololo on Lampeo Avenue, surrounded by luxury servants, and even a chauffeured Volvo car. Together, they had seven children, though the toll of their tumultuous life saw three of them pass away. Amongi, a Langi by birth, seamlessly adapted to her husband's Kakwa culture, embracing their traditions, language, and cuisine. She recalls fondly the ease of their life during Amin's regime, despite the external chaos, everything they needed was accessible, and their children received quality education. The day of reckoning, the fall of Amin's regime. As the Uganda Tanzania war escalated in 1978, Mali Amhungo held crucial military commands. The regime's collapse in 1979 marked a significant turning point in Amongi's life. Amidst the chaos, the couple fled to the Democratic Republic of Congo, then Zaire, to escape the impending conflict. In Italy, life as a refugee was manageable. Aided by the Red Cross, which provided food and financial support. However, the stability was short-lived. Tragedy struck in 1984 when Malia Mangu died under mysterious circumstances. Among his suspected foul play, believing that he may have been poisoned after excusing himself during a gathering with friends. This devastating loss thrust her into a world of uncertainty and despair. Without knowledge of her husband's business dealings or connections, she faced a bleak future with six children to care for, compounded by the absence of clarity about the other children Malia Mangu may have fathered, Malia Mangu death. Tragedy struck in 1984 when Malia Mangu died under suspicious circumstances. According to Amongi, he may have been poisoned while in Zaire, a theory supported by the sudden onset of poisoning symptoms following a social gathering. Malia Mungo's death left Amongi in a precarious position, especially as she had little knowledge of her late husband's assets, business dealings, or network of contacts. Moreover, without any formal documentation to assert her claims over their property, she found herself adrift, with limited means of sustaining her family. As a widow with no official ties to Malia Mangu's estate or connections to the powerful network they once belonged to, she faced an uncertain future. Upon her return to Uganda in the 1990s, Amongi's situation deteriorated further. She initially found refuge with the Red Cross at the Mengo Resource Center, where she stayed for six months before receiving a small refugee allowance. Unable to return to her native Lira due to the ongoing Lord's Resistance Army conflict, she tried to rebuild her life in Kampala. Amongi turned to small business ventures, baking samosas and selling milk and other goods to make a living. 
However, her efforts were stymied by financial instability and a series of unfortunate events, including a robbery that left her destitute once again. Life after Malia Mangu's death, after her husband's death, among his struggles intensified. With President Yoweri Museveni's rise to power, she lost her status as a special refugee. And the friends who once supported her turned away. She and her children were relocated back to Uganda but found no solace or support in their return. Omangi recounts how she spent six months at the Mango Red Cross Resource Center before managing to secure a small room on William Street in Kampala. In this new chapter, she reinvented herself, baking samosas to sell in nearby offices while also hawking milk and food to travelers. Despite her resilience, the search for stability proved futile. Amongi faced further obstacles as she sought to reclaim the family properties lost during the upheaval. The bureaucratic challenges were compounded by a lack of documentation, leaving her vulnerable to exploitation from those who had taken over her family's assets. Exile and struggles in Uganda, as time went on, Amongi's circumstances deteriorated further. Forced to shift to Najanankumbi, she attempted to make a living by vending African ware and groundnut paste. Yet, life continued to be fraught with challenges. A break-in left her with nothing and she was forced to relocate to Naguru housing estate, where she relied on the goodwill of others to secure a roof over her head. Unfortunately, this new living situation also became untenable, leading her to the slums of Naguru, where she now resides in a makeshift home. Here, the living conditions are starkly different from her previous life. She navigates paths strewn with garbage, contends with noisy neighbors, and has to make do with very little. Current life in Naguru slums, today, Amangi finds herself caring for her grandchildren in the Naguru slums, where her life has drastically changed. Once accustomed to a life of privilege, she now struggles to afford basic necessities, often reflecting on how she used to tip waiters with the amount she now struggles to pay in rent. Her grandchildren, ranging from 2 to 18 years old, depend on her, compounding the weight of her responsibilities. The slums are rife with challenges, from lack of sanitation to constant noise from neighboring dwellings. Among his kitchen doubles as a bathroom, and the living conditions are a far cry from her past as a celebrated air hostess. Despite her current struggles, Amongi clings to hope, awaiting promised COVID-19 relief funds to help ease her financial burden. The aftermath of exile, the years spent in exile and the return to Uganda have been marked by relentless struggles. Amongi's attempts to reclaim family properties have proven fruitless, as most were seized by those in power or relatives who took advantage of her situation. Her pleas for assistance from the government and former acquaintances have often gone unanswered, leaving her in a state of despair. Efforts by clan members to recognize her as Malia Mangu's surviving widow have brought some acknowledgement but little practical help. The complex dynamics surrounding land ownership and family lineage further complicate her situation. With ongoing disputes preventing her from gaining access to her late husband's assets, current pleas and future aspirations, Amongi continues to seek help, emphasizing the urgent need for a stable home and financial support for her grandchildren. Her pleas are grounded in a profound sense of loss and longing for a return to stability. She is acutely aware of the challenges her family faces, from education to healthcare, and hopes for a day when her situation will improve. I need a permanent house because the house in Eroa that I would call home was inherited by Malia Mangu's sister called Rebecca. The land in Koboko was taken by a relative. He want money to educate my grandchildren. They lack a decent home, beddings, clothes, and food. He cannot afford their medication. I need capital to do business and sustain the family, Amongi expresses with palpable urgency. Conclusion, Cecilia Zaituni Amongi's life story reflects the resilience of the human spirit amid adversity. From a life of luxury and power, she has faced a heartbreaking descent into poverty and uncertainty. The narrative of her struggles in the Guru Slam serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the unforeseen twists that can change one's fate. Her journey, marked by love, loss, and a relentless fight for survival, resonates deeply as she continues to navigate the challenges of her current existence while holding on to the hope for a better tomorrow.